Okay. So, uh, kind of an analysis of the Marquette Bessemer number two. Uh, we know that she left Conneaut uh, around 11 a.m., a little bit before 11 a.m. Generally, that's a five-hour trip. Uh, she was running late, so her path across the lake, you know, would look something like that, going into Port Stanley. So, from accounts, we know around 6 p.m. Um, she was spotted off of Port Stanley. Um, which would make sense. It was a rough trip. Weather was bad. Uh, it probably took a little longer than five hours. Um, so that put it somewhere around six and a half hours to seven hours um, to get over to this area. And the weather had gotten so bad that she couldn't get into this harbor. One, it wasn't well lit. And uh, um, two, the waves were just too big. So here is what we know. So things are kind of a theory, a uh, suggestion from here on out. Um, the same person that spotted her around 6 p.m. Uh, being off the harbor said that he saw that she turned west and went towards Rondo, uh, possibly to get some relief. So we have her heading towards Rondo. Um, this is actually point out pens as Rondo. Um, probably would not be able to get into Rondo. Um, you know, just not a, a easy harbor to get into, and actually smaller entrance than even Port Stanley. But we know that the wind was southwest, so she's, the wind's blowing from this corner here up this way. Um, we know that it stays that way for two days at least, from what I've been able to, to tell. Um, start kind of a little bit before they left here, all that day and all into the next day, the wind was a strong south west uh with it dropping down to cold temperatures so she's probably icing up as well so where would you go from here uh here's where i think there's uh, some uh credible choices of things that may have happened um if you can't get into here uh where are you going to go so let's kind of first look at some evidence uh here's what we do know we have uh, another sighting. Uh, this would have been around, oh, there's been a couple of different reports, but anywhere from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Um, distress whistle, 3 a.m. possible distress whistle heard here um, off Port Bruce. Along with that, in the same general area, um, we have uh, another report putting it around 5 a.m. Um, also could hear a distress whistle in this general area. Okay, now, unfortunately, we also have over here in Fairview, roughly the same time, and I didn't mark it here because this is the only one over here uh, in this area that the woman said that uh, she could see the lights, uh, she could see uh, red, green, and white, which means the boat was heading, steaming towards shore. She hung a light out to let them know. She's actually closer to Erie, but Fairview here. She hung a light out to let them know that um, they were too close to shore. And then she then saw the stern light. But this is the same time as this report over here. Um, looking at where we have wreckage, uh, you know, we see right, we have reported wreckage here by the abandoned dock or the Banadoc, uh several days later, or the Davok, I'm sorry, several days later. We have the lifeboat being found straight off here with bodies in it. We've got a uh, lifeboat and part of a lifeboat, nothing in it body-wise, but we also have um, some bodies that washed up. And then we've got a body found here and a body found way up here, um, as well as more bodies found here so this just doesn't compute for me so i'm going to drop that piece of evidence um for now so the other interesting thing is the body that we have way over here although not found until the following spring had a watch and this uh person's watch stopped at 12 25 p.m uh, the watch of that day was said to be able to survive water for an hour. 
Um, so it could be 11.25 p.m. Maybe that he got thrown in the water. So um, that means if any of that is true, what they do from 3 a.m., right? So here at 3 a.m., you know, what did they do for the next several hours? So that's kind of going over some basic things. Um, there were other boats out there. Um, so this could also be inaccurate that uh, 3 a.m. was here. Um, I did prot some targets. I did give the uh, using uh, some magnetic anomaly um, information. I did come up with three targets that I think have promise uh, and for different reasons. So let me go over those. Uh, this target here, um, I'm not going to give the exact location, but this target here um, shows up uh, on a magnetic anomaly uh, uh, survey. Um, and, and in that magnetic anomaly survey, I could pick this vessel up and I could pick up uh, this vessel over here. So I know that the, uh, at least what I was doing with the magnetic anomaly service has the potential of picking up vessels. Uh, that said, um, this whole area is almost a washout, like right over here. Um, it could be sitting in there and could be sitting in a section over here, um, as well as there's another section kind of over in here that there's so much magnetic uh, activity, I, I just can't separate anything out that might be off the bottom. Um, but again, though, I, I was looking at this in more than one angle. Um, so if we come across here, you know, me as a sailor, um, spend a lot of time on the boats, on my, on my life on boats, and the winds and waves coming this way, the Marquette and Bessemer did not have that stern gate. So if I'm over there, where would I go? Yes, I would want to go here. This makes sense to me. I'm going to see if I can get tuck in here, maybe right in here, right? and see if I can't get some relief and drop an anchor. Um, I gotta be careful that, that doesn't, the wind doesn't switch on me um, 180 degrees, right? And drive me into the point. But that's an area that I'm gonna look. But as we know, the wind was kind of this way, right? So those waves are probably still, he's probably not gonna get any, any protection. I already knows he couldn't get in, um, what, Port, Port Glasgow? Uh, that was this one here. It's even smaller than Port Stanley. Um, can I get in there? Had no relief for Rondo. What do you do? So here's a couple of theories. One, you turn around, you go back, right? And we also know there's Port Burwell here and Port Bruce. Again, smaller, almost as small or smaller than Port Stanley. But you go back, you try to make another shot at Port Stanley, right? Um, that's your closest spot. Uh, which would make sense, puts us off of here, right? Um, now, if you make a turn and you're going to head back towards uh, here in Conneaut, that's not a bad target. So you're out here, you're, you've been seen off of here, making a steam this way, and you're going to go uh, a couple of options here, either back towards Conneaut, or you're going to come out of Port Burwell, make your turn, because your other spot that there is relief is back in here. Um, but you got to get there, right? You got to get there. Uh, she makes her put her stern in, no stern gate, uh, possibly already icing up. That's a, a realistic target. As uh, far as I know, hasn't been searched too close in there. Uh, there are oil and gas wells, so possibly, right? So now let's examine a couple of things. If she went down there, winds out of the southwest, right? Here's what doesn't make any sense to me. I'll tell, let me go over what does make sense. <laughs> the wreckage here, right? We know we got wreckage here. We know we've got a body here. I didn't plot it on. Um, you know, a body could definitely bounce along the shoreline and we could wind up with our, our body here and our body going in here, especially over time, right? Here's what doesn't make sense, this out here. If I went down here, no way I'm, I'm, I'm rowing outward of Long Point, right? And it's not like these are cliffs over here either. Like if we sign in, this is beach, right? Beach, it's not cliffs. We can get up on that, right? 
Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not. Doesn't make sense to me that boat being out there. It's manned. It's got six people in it rowing for their lives. They sunk here. I, I you know, I, they're, unless they thought they were farther, you know, that could be it. They thought they were farther. You know, you're a little ways offshore. Let's uh, measure this real quick. And miles here. So just to there. 13 miles offshore in a blinding snowstorm. They may not have known where they were at. They got to get in that boat quick. They may have grabbed their compass thinking they were farther along. But if we look, you know, if they're trying to come back here, it is 40 miles, right? You would think they would know that they're closer to the Canadian shore than the American shore, but hard to say. That's my outlier why this target doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So we go back here. What do we do from here, right? Uh, we discount this 3 a.m. Um, and again, if she went down here, 3 a.m., if we go off the watch, that's the other thing. I don't know that, you know, that watch is accurate. You know, what'd she do for the next seven hours? Um, that's not very far to go for seven hours, right? So option two, this came across here. You know, what if this guy had his watch set wrong, right? And that's 11 p.m., right? So 6 p.m. here. We get over here. Um, you know, they said uh, 12 p.m., right? Um, you know, it very well could have been interpreted wrong. So, of course, so we're just going to go 11 or 12. It could be noon. could be uh, midnight, right? Midnight. That's, that's, you know, so let's add all this together. It's midnight, right? Here's our possibilities. We come here. No shelter. You make a turn, you're gonna go back towards Conneaut, right? So you make your turn, uh, or even possibly gonna to steam towards Cleveland. It's much bigger, right? So you come over here, you make that turn. I think it's still pretty early for 11 p.m., but again, you know, I'm just going off a watch here. Who knows how long that route watch ran. But now let's re, re kind of look at some things when blowing out of the Southwest, right? I mean, that's probably no good. The one over here I just missed probably also no good. Um, lots of other boats out there could have been blowing their, uh, their whistles and steamers trying to get in. Um, but so back to that southwest wind. Whew, hey, that makes sense. For wreckage here, maybe makes sense for wreckage here, right? A little bit more sense. Um, uh, you know that that wreckage could have blown all the way down the lake. Um, definitely, you know, body down here, body down there, all makes sense. This boat here still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, right? Again, if you're measuring distance here, they know they made the turn, even though they're heading toward the U.S. shore off of this point. Yeah, here, I messed it up. Let's try that again. Off of this point. Thirteen miles, just like we over there, compared to thirty-five miles. Again, all possible. A lot of it makes sense. Some of the wreckage makes sense. Lifeboat doesn't. Um, just going off of being a mariner, right? You made that turn. You got the same problem. That same corners into the wind. Your stern's not there yet. But if you made that turn and you're running down to here now kind of made this turn and you have to come out anyway to make that point. Put your stern to the wind. She may not have been coming to Cleveland. She may not have been coming to Conneaut. She may have been shooting for Long's Point, which is something she's done before in the past and hid for weather. Lots of boats did. That's that's your safety. That's your Lake Erie safety spot. Now, what I think is the most promising target for lots of different reasons. Um, also, uh, matches up the so these all three of these are targets I've looked at with magnetic anomaly data from the 80s um, and like I said I was able to verify some other wrecks including the trade wind which was odd I didn't think the trade wind would come up but she was carrying steel um, for the railroad industry it may have been why I was able to see her so if you get to here now you're gonna head towards Cleveland uh, Time-wise, kind of matches the watch a little bit, especially if they 
say went through here, came down here at 3 p.m., right? Tried to get back in, uh, 3 a.m., sorry. Tried to get back in. Uh, so I just take cover as much as I could along this way, uh, along the Canadian shore, hoping to make one pass by here again, and then turn and run towards Cleveland because they aren't getting in, right? Um, made a couple of trips up and down the shoreline, um, make a turn towards Cleveland. And this is a promising magnetic anomaly target um, with no other wrecks around it, right? So um, that we know of. There could be wrecks out there, but none that we know of. Um, so now let's reanalyze things. This is why this makes more sense to me, all right? So I am now this men in the lifeboat. Who knows how long they can last in the lifeboat? They aren't dressed for weather. Um, got a cleaver and a couple of knives with them from the, the cook. And they've got a second set of clothes and a missing body of somebody who may have jumped overboard, right? So wind blowing this way. Now, let's do that same measurement. I would have to know if they're probably close to Cleveland, right? Or at least going into Cleveland. Make that measurement. And we're about 15 miles, right? And 16, probably, if we go right off of there. Let me try that again. Here to here. 18 miles, right? Uh, but the Canadian side, you know, they're in the 30 mile range, all the way where you go. So they know that they are past the American side and heading towards Cleveland. I'd be rolling my butt towards the shore. Now, if I'd go towards the lights of Cleveland, whatever I could see, I would be going towards the American shore, right? So now, if we count that with that wind, let's say they froze to death. I ran out of uh, well, steam to roll that southwest wind. Yeah, take that over into here somewhere. Makes sense for that, right? Makes sense for a wreckage that wasn't being rowed and just bodies to come up over here, which we do have, you know, that southwest wind's going to blow right into there. Uh, I could also see bodies skirting around the point. Um, what if, you know, um, you know, making around the point that gives us our body here. And of course, this is a late one. Who knows what the wind and weather did. He could have bounced off the shoreline several times, right? Um, he had a, a life jacket on, so he would have stayed floating um, to make it all the way down here. Um, but to me, that one makes the most sense. So looking at third over here, um, wanted to point this out. This is wreckage. It's a guess, all I know is 15 miles off uh, west of, of Long Point. Uh, the uh, Badak, uh, yeah, I forgot the name of Ben, ben Brandenbach. No, there's a couple different ones. Uh, the Davok, sorry, the Davok reported having uh, lost crew, right? So, um, or sorry, having seen a, a lifeboat which is probably one of the ones that came up on shore over here so this this truly might be closer to here right um we just know it's 15 miles off long point so I, I guesstimated it now what if she sunk right there what if that all that wreckage which floats them generally is pretty close to where she sunk so again I, you know i this could be 15 miles off right this goes back to now being a realistic target um and again here, this was noted as five miles off, right, of Erie. Maybe it's maybe it's over here, right? Um, the, these, you know, they didn't give a, a perfect, just five miles and 15 miles, right? So, or sorry, five miles west of, um, five miles off in the last week. So, all right, sorry, kind of confusing myself, but um, I already measured that. Maybe I got that, may have put that in the wrong spot, <laughs> which, all right, so we're off of Erie, about five miles. Yeah, okay. Um, let me recheck my story. I, I had that backward, that's why. 15 miles off of here, five miles off of here. But again, that five miles could have been over here, right? Or over, if we're over here, that could be, you know, wreckage over here, right? Off a of long point, because I don't know where where the Davok exactly was. Um, so we could maybe be moving this over 
here, which puts this target back into play. Um, and, you know, maybe they just didn't know they were this close and they tried to go towards Kanye, right? Then that makes sense. So I can make them arguments for a couple of different places. 